Good morning. Welcome to Marketing and Mindset here on Clubhouse. If you were trying to get into this room at nine o'clock this morning, I am so sorry. I was having some serious technical issues. The room was not working for some reason, and it was not allowing me uh, to, to start it. I think honestly um, that it's a thing with what's going on with um, Clubhouse changing a few things and making some changes to the app. I think it kind of messed me up this morning. So if you were here earlier today and you were um, trying to get in here, I apologize if it was giving you any issues. Right now, uh, the room's usually hosted under Social Media Marketing Trends Club here in Clubhouse. And um, recently that room was changed into from a club to a house since Clubhouse is making all of these changes. But no worries, I'm going to be talking to you today about blogging for business. Um, I'm pretty much going to be going over why your business needs a blog, the benefits of having a blog, what kind of businesses might need a blog, and pretty much how you can get started with that. Bear with me, I'm getting a sip of water to get started today. So first things first, uh, you're listening to Marketing and Mindset Podcast that's recorded here inside of Clubhouse. My name is Vanessa Cooper. I am a Pinterest marketing expert and content creator. And as a Pinterest marketer, one of the things that I'm always encouraging my clients to have on their website is a blog. And um, in Pinterest marketing, I push blogs because Pinterest loves blogs. Um, they love having fresh contents, fresh links to new posts, and fresh information for, um, for their audience to get information from. But I know there's a lot of businesses that get started and they might get started with a Facebook page and then that's all they promote on or an Instagram page or they have um, social media profiles on across all the platforms, but they don't necessarily have like any content going out of their website. So they might have fresh posts for their Instagram. They might have fresh posts for their Facebook, but they don't have any fresh posts in their website. Their website's always the same, the same services page or the same products page or the same home page, the same landing pages. And there's no changes happening inside of the website. So I'm going to go over five reasons of why you should have a blog on your website. Blogging is not dead and what the benefits are of having a blog on your website. Um, number one, Google loves blogs. That is one big reason that you should have a blog on your website if you don't already have one. So as you know, Google is a major, the biggest search engine. We all Google things. And so what happens is as your website starts having content and information, um, tips, tricks, whatever your business is, you can blog about so many different topics. Um, Google starts to notice, hey, this website has a lot of content and information on this topic. This website has a lot of information on this topic. And so slowly you start showing up in Google results as an authority in your niche, okay? You become a place for people to go to for knowledge. And it's really, really important to provide knowledge and value and information for your business um, because this really helps attract your target audience. So for example, let's say that you're, you're selling um, jewelry that you make and that's what your business is or you're, you, you do makeup, you know, there's different makeups that you're either affiliated with or that you sell or even skincare products and things like that. For the jewelry, you can have a sort of fashion blog where you talk about what different uh, clothing styles you can wear with different types of earrings or different types of bracelets, what kind of rings look good with certain styles, what kind of earrings look good with certain styles or necklaces with certain dresses and things like that. Having a blog with different fashion tips, um, tips on cleaning your jewelry, how to main, how to you know keep it clean and keep it shiny, tips on how to dress for the summer or for the winter and then how to accessorize your jewelry with those outfits. Those are the kinds of blogs that are going to start attracting people interested in your product that are going to eventually want to buy that jewelry from you. Same with the makeup, you know, attract and, and blog about the topics that your target audience is interested in and you'll slowly start attracting them to you. And same thing um, with 
um, the skincare, you know, if you have a skincare line, having a blog that's talking about um, skincare is, is and how to, you know, different tips on that is going to really help you. So the big point number one is that Google is going to love you um, because you're going to have all of this information. And when it starts recognizing you and you start showing up in search results on Google, people are going to find you. More people are going to find you. So having a blog makes Google love you, which in turn is going to start just bringing you more and more and more traffic to your website. And you want that Google traffic and you want that organic Google traffic because these are people who are specifically searching for what you have to offer. It's not like cold marketing. This is a warm market of people who have found you through Google now are on your site and are more willing to look around and buy. Number two, the reason that you should have a blog on your website is building trust. So what do I mean by building trust? When you're in the online space, there's a kind of big trust issues going on in the internet world. Why? There are so many people, you know, catfishing in the internet, lying about who they are, posting fake posts, you know, sending spammy links, pretending to be your family members on social media and sending you links to hack into your account. I mean, there's all kinds of things going on in the online world that really pushes people's trust away and really has people sort of really sketchy online. And it's, it's, it's just how it is, unfortunately. And so a blog is a great way to introduce who you are to your audience. It's a great way to speak directly to them. It's a great way to have and open up a conversation. You know, blogs always have the comment section where people can comment and you can go back and forth and talk with them. And you slowly start building trust with your audience when you have a blog. Because, you know, it's sort of like, you know, when you go to a store, like you could easily go to Walmart and buy yourself, um, let's say buy yourself a shirt, like a cute shirt with a cute saying on it, right? But if you have a friend who sells shirts with a cute saying on them, you know, you're inclined to want to give your friend business because you trust your friend and you want to support your friend. Um, if you're walking down the street and you have somebody trying to sell you, um, I'm trying to think, uh, trying to sell you a new lotion. They're like, hey, this lotion is amazing. Buy this lotion for me. Buy this lotion for me. Most of the time you might be like, uh, I don't know about that. Let me think about it, you know? But if your friend comes up to you and she says, oh man, I bought this lotion and this lotion is amazing. You should try it out. You're way more inclined to take your friend's recommendation and try that lotion out than a complete and random stranger on the street trying to sell it to you. And so that is, that's kind of my, how I compare blogs, websites that have blogs versus websites that don't. With that blog, you're building trust with your audience, okay? You're like that friend. Instead of being the salesy person, you know, that's like, hey, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. You're like that friend that's like, hey, you trust me, right? Check out this lotion that I've tried that I love. I think you're going to love it too. We are way more inclined to buy from people that we know, people that we trust, you know, people that we're familiar with. I'm sure the first time you ever bought something on Amazon, if you're old like me and remember <laughs> what the world was like before Amazon, I'm sure the first time you bought something online, you're a little sketched out. Like, I don't know about this Amazon site. Not sure how this works, you know? Um, but then over time, you built trust with Amazon. And now you know that Amazon's awesome, that they got the two-day shipping, that the returns are so simple that you don't need to worry about buying clothes or shoes on there because if it doesn't fit, you can return it immediately immediately with no problem. And so it's just like that. You built trust with these companies. You build trust. You trust your friends. And so that's what a blog does. It's, it's a way for you to build trust with your audience. You're getting to know you. You're telling them stories about your life maybe a little bit, or you're teaching them about your niche, about what you talk about. I'm a Pinterest marketer, so I blog a lot about Pinterest marketing and I give a lot of marketing advice and I'll even have some guest speakers actually come blog and give some advice. 
But when I'm writing, I talk Pinterest. Why? Because I am attracting people who are interested in Pinterest marketing and might eventually want my services. Um, I sell a printable on Pinterest and I um, offer training on Pinterest. And so in order for me to build trust with my audience, I need to let them know that I am an expert in Pinterest. I need to give them some of that information, some of that knowledge, some of that value so that they can build trust with me and realize, oh my gosh, I never thought about that. She knows what she's doing on Pinterest. She is an expert in her niche. Maybe I'll use her for services. Um, so that's number two for why you should have a blog on your website. It's for building trust. Excuse me. I'm like so thirsty this morning. <laughs> and if you've listened to my podcast before, um, this is just how it is. <laughs> um, and I forgot to mention early on in the beginning, um, in case I, I think I forgot to mention, we are here Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern inside of Clubhouse. It's usually me, Vanessa Cooper, with my Clubhouse bestie, Connie, who um, hosts this room and are always sharing valuable information, whether it's marketing or mindset for business owners. And usually we'll try to have a guest speaker that speaks on new topics that we're not experts on. We've had all kinds of speakers in this room in the past, and we'll have all kinds of speakers in the future. So make sure you tune in and listen to us Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern so you can learn some good stuff to grow your business. With that being said, let me move on to uh, number three, the third reason that you should have a blog for your business. Number three is to become an authority in your niche. So um, what does that mean? And I, I talk, touched on that in the first topic when I was talking about Google. So I'm going to talk a little more in depth about it. When your website starts producing that content related to your niche, whether it's a fashion blog or a lifestyle blog, or mine is kind of like a marketing, a marketing and mindset type of blog, when you start producing that content in that niche, Google starts to notice, okay? Okay, she's she's talking a lot about fashion tips. That person's talking a lot about health and wellness. That person's talking a lot about parenting. And so Google starts to send more and more people to your website. Like I said, that's why you want to blog. But the as as Google starts to recognize that people are staying on your website, people are liking your website, people interested in that specific topic are, you know, are really enjoying your website, they start ranking you more and more and more. And so you start to become an authority in your niche, not just for your audience, but for Google. You start to become the go-to person for your topic, for, um, for your information. You start to become the fashion blog that everybody wants to go to. Google recognizes, you know, anybody searching for fashion tips, this website's got good content and they'll send just, just a ton of traffic to your website. And then people start to recognize you as an authority. They know if you need fashion tips, go to this website. They've got the best fashion tips and check out, you know, the clothing that they sell on the website too. It's awesome. And she teaches you how to style it, you know, if, if you're interested in Pinterest marketing, you know, check out Vanessa's website. You know, I'm not ranked too much in Google quite yet because I'm like the worst at blogging, <laughs> but I try to be consistent on it as much as possible because this is what it's going to lead to. You become an authority in your niche. Google ranks you more and more in a search engine. And, you know, you might go viral on social media platforms and all that, and it's great. But there's nothing better than Google working for you and just bringing tons of traffic to your website. So becoming an authority in your niche where people now see you as an expert in your field is so good for business. It really, it's also a part of that building trust where you've become an expert in your field and now people are more willing to trust you with what you have to offer, whether it's services or product. Number four, the fourth reason that you should have a blog on your website is to sell without being pushy. And so when people come to your website because you have information that they were searching for and that they found on your website and that they're now getting from you, their mindset is switched. It's different than if you are just trying to sell something and just push sales on them. And so I always use this analogy. And if you've been listening to um, my, my talks before, then you've probably heard this before. 
But the way that I compare it so that you're, you can understand is one, nobody likes a sales pitch. Nobody wants to really be sold to. We're kind of turned off by people in our face trying to sell us things. And so back in the day, and I'm really showing my age, back in the day, people used to come and knock on your door and try to sell you something. I've had people try to sell me vacuums. I had somebody uh, try to sell me this cleaning spray and they like did a whole demonstration of how it takes stains out of your clothing. And I've even had somebody try to sell me a steak service where they like literally, like they were like going to deliver me these frozen steaks for my family. Like I'm not even joking. And if you recall ever having somebody knock on your door to try to sell you something, it was, it really turned you off. You were always kind of like, please, I'm busy with my family. I don't have time for this. No, I'm not interested. Please go away. Right. It's just something about sales in your face, like commercials, you know, now I'm a weirdo and I actually like commercials because I find most of them hilarious, but a lot of people don't like commercials. They don't want that marketing in their face. They don't want to be told to buy stuff. You know, they don't want to hear a sales pitch. It can be annoying, especially in the online space. You know, I'm almost certain everyone that's, that's a business owner that's been in the online world has had cold messaging done for them, has had people just trying to sell them things in their inbox. And it's, you don't like that. But when you decide that you need to buy something from Target, let's say you go to Target because you want to get a candle or something like that. You're going to Target because there's something valuable for you at Target. When you're in Target, there's all kinds of ads for different things. There's all kinds of products for sale, all kinds of signs for you to buy things because it's only this price. Your mindset is shifted. You are more willing to grab things for sale and put them in your cart. And like Girl Scout cookies that stand outside of Walmart. Back in the day, you'd have Girl Scouts come knock at your door to try to sell you cookies. Girl Scouts themselves learned that if they put themselves in a place where people are already going to buy, they're already going there for value, people are more happy to buy because it's there and it's convenient. And, and they've already had their mindset switch to I'm coming here to buy. And so now you see like a lot of Girl Scouts are selling outside of Walmarts and things like that outside of stores. And it's a lot easier to just go ahead and grab them and buy them. And you're not kind of turned off by somebody knocking at your door. That's exactly how a blog on your website is. Okay. Instead of you just having a website with a bunch of stuff for sale and people are like, oh, they're just selling a bunch of stuff. You have a website with free information, free value, free content for your target audience. You're attracting them into your website, just like Target attracts us into their store. And then whilst they're reading the blog post that you wrote about whatever it is that you wrote about, if you recommend, hey, you should check out my shop. I've got this, this, and this that you're probably interested in since I attracted you and you're interested in this topic, you know? I mean, you wouldn't say that, but you know what I'm saying? check this stuff out in my shop, or I have this freebie, you should sign up for my email list, or have you checked out this product that I recommend? Their mindset is shifted. It shifted because they came to your website. It wasn't a sales post on social media where you were like, hey, this is on sale, you know, check it out, come to my website. It wasn't just a website full of products for sale. They came to your website for content and information. They've read your blog post, which has instilled a little bit of trust in them. I'm, hey, I'm a person that has knowledge about this topic. I'm an authority in my niche. Here's a product that you might be interested. Look around while you're in my website, you know, or my hypothetical store and see what else you want to buy and check out. And so their mindset has shifted. When you attract people to you, it can increase your sales so much more than if you're chasing after people. And then if you're chasing after sales and you're just hoping that if you post enough posts about that, you have this for sale on your website, people are going to want to go shop there. No, it's so much easier when you attract them to your website with something completely unrelated or well, not completely unrelated, but something that's not, Hey, come buy this, but free value, free content and information. It's much easier for you to get that sale once they look around and realize, hey, I like this person. Okay, she's she's recommending this product. All right, maybe I'll try it out. Whew, that was a lot. <laughs> Let's move on to the next and final point. 
Number five, another good, oh, and great reason that your business needs a blog is monetization. So you're probably, um, if you're like me and you've been in the online business world for a long time, you're probably familiar with the word passive income or multiple income streams, making money in more than one way. That is the beauty of the online world. So having a blog is a great way to make extra money. Now, if you sell a product on your website, obviously the blog is going to help you. Excuse me. The blog is going to help you increase those sales because of everything that I just went over. They're going to be more willing to buy. They're going to be more willing to check out your shop. But if you don't have a product that you're actually selling on your website, like me, I really just sell services. I might have one digital product and some training, but I just sell services. A blog is a great way to monetize with additional income streams. Like, and there's so many different ways that you can make money with a blog. Um, you can actually look up and find a gazillion different ways, but one of the ways is affiliate marketing. You can make recommendations inside of your blog for particular products that when people buy them, you have make a commission. Um, I'm an affiliate for several different companies that I promote inside of my blog, whether it's Canva, the design program that I use to create my Pinterest pins for my clients, or Tailwind, the scheduler that I use for, for you know scheduling out pins on Pinterest. Whatever it is, you know, obviously it should be products that you recommend for your niche that are related or products that are going to be beneficial for your target audience um, are things that you can become affiliates for. The website share a sale is a great one to get affiliate links. But even though it might not be your main, it's not going to be your main source of income. It's a great way to monetize your blog. So not only you're using your blog to increase your, your sales and your services or your products, but you're using your blog itself to make sales and get some extra commission. Eventually when your blog is big enough, you can charge to have posts sponsored, like companies will pay you to write a blog about their product. You can make money that way. You can make money by adding ads to your blog, like AdSense. You can have, there are certain websites that'll pay to add little ads to your blog that'll start creating, giving you a little bit of money, you know? And so these are all these different ways to monetize your blog. And then you can sell all kinds of things. If you have a service like me, you're a service provider like me, you can sell little digital products, you know, through your blog and start, you know, selling little things here and there that might help your target audience if you don't already sell products. There are countless, countless ways to monetize your blog to where your main business won't be your only source of income, but you'll have additional income streams because of your blog. So it's so beneficial in so many ways that not only will you um, be growing your current business with your blog, but you'll actually be creating additional income streams with your blog as well. Now, if you check out my blog and you can search for this, there's a post um, that it's everything that I just went over. It's five reasons why your business needs a blog. But in the fifth reason, which is monetization, um, you will find um, a link to an article that says 30 ways to make money with your blog. And so when you click that link, um, you can read all of the different ways. I mean, there's so, so many different ways that, that you can make money, but it's just really, really beneficial. So to wrap things up, if you are completely clueless about to blog about, let's say you've listened to this episode and you're telling to your, you're, you're speaking to yourself, you're going, man, I really do think that I should start a blog. These points are right. Um, Vanessa has a point, you know, um, don't stress about what to blog about. Um, it's really, you can really just start off by writing almost anything and then, you know, just do some research. My my suggestion on like what to how what to even think about writing about is think about your target audience okay 
what are their interests? What are they searching for online? How, what would they be searching in Google to find you and be interested in your website? Think about these things and think about the topics that they're interested in. Um, you could easily uh, go on Pinterest, you know, and start searching, search a particular topic on Pinterest, and you'll find all kinds of different articles related to that topic that can actually give you some inspiration on what to write about. Pinterest is a great platform for inspiration. That's literally the whole, like the main goal of, of how Pinterest started was for inspiring people, inspiration. Um, and so go on Pinterest, type your niche or what service you offer or what product you sell. Um, and then see like what comes up, like what kind of articles come up in your niche. And that'll give you some ideas of what to blog about to help your business grow. So to review what I went over, number one, Google loves blogs. Number two, you can build trust with your audience with a blog. Number three, you can become an authority in your niche with the blog. Number four, you can sell without being pushy. And number five, monetization. These are all great reasons to start a blog. And if you're completely clueless about starting a blog, I am going to pin a link. It's actually just for... um my links page on my website. So it's kind of like um, my link tree page that um, I actually created myself because I don't know, it's better and it's free. Um, but if you go to this link, I just posted it on top. If you go to the links, uh, the link that I just posted, you will find um, different links to different things that I offer. You're going to find my free Pinterest profile mini audit, uh, a checklist that I sell. And in the middle, you're going to find this little pink thing that says the blog plan, and it's going to say free blogging course. So if you're thinking about starting a blog and you don't know where to start, that free blogging course is going to give you the tools that you need and the information that you need to kind of help you get started. Um, and that's how I got started years ago with the blog. Um, well, my first blog, which I don't have anymore, <laughs> I ended up switching my whole niche. And so I had to start a new one. But um, that course, it's a free blogging course. It'll teach you how to get started with the blog and like the first baby steps to take. And it's really beneficial. And it's a great, she's a great teacher. It's from Start a Mom Blog, if you're not familiar, um, who teaches that course. And she is awesome. And I highly, highly recommend her. So definitely check it out. And as always, if you have any questions or, you know, you, you get stuck with thinking about, you know, what kind of blog to start for your business, feel free to message me. Do not message me here in Clubhouse. Find me on either Instagram or Facebook at Network Nessie um, and shoot me a message and let me know that you're thinking about starting a blog, but you weren't sure where to start, like what topics to write about. And I would love to just like balance back and forth ideas with you on helping you get started. Um, so you're welcome to reach out for help. And then just wanted to remind you guys that we are here Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern sharing new topics and information on marketing and mindset to help your business grow. Um, and I'm usually here with my clubhouse bestie, Connie, who couldn't make it here today, but I'm sure we'll see her soon. And then we have guest speakers that talk about new topics related to marketing or mindset. So make sure that you, you check us out um, and come back and see us next time. I will be shutting down the room soon. Thank you so much for listening to Marketing and Mindset. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I am shutting down the room in five, four, three, two, one. Have a good one, everyone.